And my name is Adrian Wilson. I run the Technologies Division at Element 6. Element 6 um, is a member of the De Beers group of companies and we manufacture synthetic diamond for industrial use. There are two parts to the organization. One part that looks at the abrasive properties of diamond um, for drilling, oil exploration, um, machine tools, etc. And on the um, other side of the business is the non-abrasive um, side of the business. So we're looking at the non-abrasive properties of diamond and that division is called Technologies and that's the uh, division that I run. My name is Andrew Bennett. I work in the uh, R&D part of Technologies which is the part of Element 6 that is working specifically on the, the high-tech applications and then generally focused on CBD uh, technology. CBD is, uh, this is microwave enhanced CBD uh, and it's excellent for driving down or controlling the amount of defects in the diamond that you're working with. Um, my main role is as the manager of the optical applications program. The very first one, and we've been supplying into this area for around 20 years, is in CO2 laser systems. So we can use a polycrystalline material where the scatters not really limiting at that sort of wavelength. Um, and it deals with the very high powers uh, that are going through. So we're talking about systems above about a kilowatt. You start to want to use diamond. And if you're going above about eight kilowatts, I'd say you, you, you're getting near the point where you have to use diamond. Um, and so that can be as an output coupler or um, some sort of beamline uh, window, uh, beam splitters, lenses, that sort of system. So for high power CO2 lasers. We also now see a lot of applications in cooling parts for disc lasers. So that can be both intracavity and outside the cavity as a, as a substrate. This is actually a piece of polycrystalline diamond and is the, actually the largest example of a diamond window today. Okay. This has about a diameter of 135 millimeters and is, as I mentioned, produced using polycrystalline diamonds, so made from many discrete individual crystals that are effectively synthesized or grown together. Now what you'll observe from looking at this material is it's transparent and you don't actually see any um, artifacts or features relating to the fact it's produced many grains and that's because of the purity of the interface between the grains and the purity of the individual crystals themselves. Like, and that's achieved using microwave CVD. We operate the synthesis at a temperature such that we're able to etch away any um, contaminants. For example, SP2 graphite is virtually eliminated with this material, so you're left with very, very pure diamond. And that really gives it its great um, properties in terms of low absorption and in terms of thermal conductivity. I think most of our cells go into very high power applications. Um, what high power means at different wavelengths is, is open for discussion. Um, you know, at CO2 wavelengths, maybe we're talking about um, tens of kilowatts, whereas maybe down uh, working in a Vexcel system, getting much above the watts and towards kilowatts is, is very high power. So, so what you mean by high power is different at these different wavelengths, but it usually goes into this. So the critical point there is the thermal conductivity. And the thermal conductivity of diamond is two to three orders of magnitude higher than any other material you're tending to use in these optical systems. So it just enables you to um, really get the heat out faster than anything else you can use. So people use our thermal grades of diamond outside of the cavity, um, and that's been done for a long while now. And that's where it's just an improvement over another possible uh, heat spreader, like copper or aluminium or something. Um, but equally, you can now use it inside the cavity as well, because then you're combining the low absorption at a lot of different wavelengths with that thermal conductivity. So that's pretty exciting. First of all, the polycrystalline diamond, which is the one that's typically used in the, uh, in the 10 micron and the, uh, the near infrared, uh, the infrared applications. The, the work on there has been improving the dimensions. So for a long while, it was sufficient to be growing to about one millimeter thick and to be having parts of, I don't know, 20 millimeters to maybe 80 millimeters with the kind of window sizes we were selling. Uh, more recently, particularly driven by something called uh, laser-produced plasma, EUV, extreme ultraviolet lithography, there's a need for a whole range of different components for systems. So that can be a larger window, maybe it's a lens, maybe it's a flatter window than you needed in the past. So there's a whole new range of components being asked for, driven by these very complex optical systems, all using very high power systems. One of the problems that you find when you look at uh, diamond, particularly if you're looking again at the polycrystalline first of all, so again thinking about the absorption around 10 microns, we are pretty close to the intrinsic absorption of diamond at that level. We can't keep pushing the absorption down and down. And yet if we get to a window that's taking more than maybe 50, 60 kilowatts, 
then even Diamond starts to have trouble with dealing with that sort of power. So how do you actually go up in power? How do you make a window that can produce higher power when you can't get the absorption down significantly further and you can't, um, well, you're trying to get to this high power? Well, the first thing you can do is try and absorb, uh, you can't get the absorption coefficient down, but you can reduce the absorbance of the system. So can I go to a thinner window? So can I increase the strength of my diamond? And actually that's, that's very feasible. Um, if you look at diamond and the way it grows, you have a nucleation side at the bottom when you start the growth and a growth surface at the top. The nucleation side tends to be a very strong, um, have a very high fracture strength, whereas the growth surface has a much lower fracture strength. Um, however, we understand what gives you the high strength of the nucleation and the lower strength of the growth. So we can work on that fracture strength and, um, and make a thinner part with a lower overall absorbance that can actually go in and still fulfill your safety factors and hold off vacuum and so on. So that's one area. Um, a lot of the current development work and pushing us on is in the single crystal area, where again it's about getting the absorption down as much as possible at the various wavelengths where people are looking to use this. With single crystal you don't have to worry about scatter, so you're open to working at a multitude of wavelengths. From a general market perspective, our customers' technology roadmaps dictate our product development roadmaps. And then an individual customer perspective, we work very, very closely with our customers, with our partners, to develop application-specific or customer-specific solutions. So, for example, you may want to change the, the coating on the diamond. You may want to change the diameter or the thickness of the material. You may want to change its, its properties. We're able to engineer the material to have different characteristics, different properties for different customers and applications. Actually, I am very open to people coming to me and telling me what the improvement is that they need out of the diamond. I don't know, and they do, so uh, I need to know that.